G'day guys, it's Jara here, and welcome to today's video. It was kind of a little different, because today we're doing a podcast type of format, so you're not going to be able to see my face, but you'll hear my voice, and you will see some photos or gifs slash gifs pop up on the screen, as well as possibly some statistics. Pretty much whatever you see on the screen is what I wanted to put up on the screen. So today we're going to be talking about a couple of things. We're going to be talking about Captain Marvel. We're going to be talking about Alita a little bit, Shane Dawson x Jeffree Star, all these things coming out, as well as Colourpop, Momo, and T-Series vs PewDiePie. So again, this podcast, if I continue to do it, is going to be on things that I enjoy. I love YouTube, so there's going to be a lot of YouTube news. Not only that, there's going to be a lot of movie news, and there will be a segment as well where any news that you guys want me to talk about will be in there, as well as just anything that's out of the blue. Now... For the first segment of today's, well, podcast episode, we're going to be talking about Captain Marvel. Now, Captain Marvel came out not long ago as we're filming this, which is the 12th of March, 2019. Just so everyone is loud and clear. I did see the movie, and spoiler alert, I really enjoyed it. But also, there will be no spoilers to be said in this podcast at all. Now... Captain Marvel had a lot of fans, or as the internet called them, quote unquote nerds, quite upset. Which I didn't really see, to be honest. I'll read what people have been saying. So, this is from The Outline, which is a website. People were saying that the reason for all this upset has been Larson, which is the, or Brie Larson, who is the person who acts as Captain Marvel or plays Captain Marvel had ongoing remarks about the importance of inclusivity and diversity in the film world. She had liked her role as Danvers, which is Captain Marvel's last name (coughs) my apologies on the cough to form of activism. Despite consistent criticism from online trolls, Larson has been consistent in her messaging. Earlier this month she told Marie Claire, that she had recently noticed her press events were filled with white male movie critics, and as a result, she wanted to advocate for more inclusive inclusivity in the media. So they also said that they outline plan the outline plans to boycott the film and watch Alita: Battle Angel instead because it is supposedly a a political. It's supposed to have like non-political stuff in it. Even though the Alita star, Rosa, I'm going to pronounce the last name wrong and I do apologise. Rosa Salaz- Salaz's comments about politicians who want to build walls contradicted this. So there's a lot of speculations going around about, or a lot of things going around about how you shouldn't see Captain Marvel. Because, you know, it's a female driven person who is advocating for diversity in the media and kind of women's rights and stuff like that and they're saying instead of seeing this movie you should go see the movie Alita which is Alita Battle Angel which I also did see and spoilers it was really good so I personally am confused by this because first off both films are amazing I don't see why we need to boycott any of them and I don't see a a real point So to give you a little bit of background story for Captain Marvel, despite the negative trolls um, campaigning against Captain Marvel, it had ranked 646 million globally in the first weekend. It is the biggest box office worldwide launched for a female-led movie beating out Wonder Woman in 2017, which was an amazing film. I quite enjoy that. In Australia, which is where I'm from, Captain Marvel made 13.59 million over the weekend and 15.08 million since Wednesday's preview. It is the biggest local March opening weekend ever. I also want to just say, after four days, it's already been the third highest grossing movie for the year in Australia behind How to Train Your Dragon 3 and Mary Poppins Returns. Also, Captain Marvel grossed 217 million, or for all of you US fans, that is about 153 million in North America, significantly ahead of Wonder Woman, which only grossed about 103 US. At the time, Wonder Woman boasted the highest opening for a female lead movie, 
which we all respect. Outside of North America, Captain Marvel ranked in 429 million, or for my US people, 302 million. It is the fifth highest overseas opening behind The Fate of the Furies, Avengers Infinity War, Jurassic World, and Harry Potter Deathly Hallows Part 2. So again, if you want to go see Captain Marvel, go see Captain Marvel, because in all honesty, it is a phenomenal film. I, yes, I'm going to say this right now, I'm a little bit of a feminist, but nowhere did I see any feminism in there. I didn't see enough where it was like, you must be feminist, you must be supporting, you know, girl on girls and all of this stuff. Like, I didn't see any of that. I just thought a fantastic film, and I just wanted to emphasize kind of the drama behind Captain Marvel. And just to let everyone know a little bit about Alita, Battle Angel, again, phenomenal film, would definitely recommend as well. Don't boycott either one of them, just go watch both, support both, do whatever. That also made $382,659,117 so far as of recording this. Now next, we're heading into the YouTube world. We're going to slide into that YouTube world and we're going to talk about Shane X Jeffree Star. So if you don't know anything about this, Shane Dawson is doing a collaboration with Jeffree Star who is a makeup artist on YouTube as well as he has his own business called Star Cosmetics. They're doing a collaboration together. I follow both of them on YouTube and social media and from what I've been able to see is that a lot of people are speculating that the palette will be called Conspiracy. It has neither been different is neither been confirmed nor denied but fingers crossed it will be something along those lines as that fits Shane's aesthetic as you could say. Now Jeffree Star knows what his shit when it comes to makeup so we're gonna see how that goes. Both of them had said that it should take about seven months to film the video, the process. Don't worry both of them are still coming out with you know content but I'm curious to see the palette and hey, maybe I'll buy my first ever makeup palette. We'll see. But keep an eye out for Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star to see when that palette will come out. Again, we don't know much about what it's called. Everyone is speculating that it's going to be called Conspiracy. But we will see. Now moving on, we're still sticking into the YouTube world. We're going to talk about some coming out. And by that, I mean, recently Liddy Singh has come out as bisexual. So... She tweeted this out saying, female, check, coloured, check, bisexual, check. But throughout my life, these have been proven to be obstacles from time to time, but now I'm fully embracing them as my superpowers. No matter how many boxes you check, I encourage you to do the same. Kiss. <coughs> and I honestly want to say good on her, because first off, I under I know what it's like to obviously be female and to be bisexual. It is a hard world to be a female alone. But then having another layer to that, it can be quite difficult. And a lot of people were obviously super supportive about her. But a lot of people were also like, why did you feel like you had to come out? Like, we would have supported you no matter what. The reason why people were really happy that she came out is because she was... She is a... And I'm not being racist here. She is an Indian... Pretty much superstar. She is an Indian influential person in the social media world and for her to come out just shows that you can be a high up person and not have to be straight as was stereotypically shown when some of us were younger so all I have to say is good on you Lily Singh I'm glad that you feel comfortable enough to come out and we all support you no matter what again still sticking into the YouTube hemisphere we're talking about Zoella now, Zoella has been on YouTube for a long time now. And she's done many things here and there that people haven't liked. For example, there was her book. People speculated that it was ghostwritten. She's just had a lot of hate in the past. And that hasn't changed with a collaboration she's done recently with the cosmetic brand in America called Colourpop. So, Zoella and Colourpop created a quote-unquote brunch inspired collection so it says here from their website the collection is 70s inspired and features a 12 shade eyeshadow palette pressed pigments sorry pressed powders liquid lipsticks and some gel lip liners 
a lot of people are mad about this because the eyeshadow palette looks like the exact same colors on constant repeat. Everyone says it's boring and bland. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. The picture is up on screen. Oh, someone doing some swatches. Now, I personally can agree to some extent. Some of the colors do look ridiculously similar. I'm just having a look at the picture currently myself right now. Some of the pictures do look quite similar. So to me, Sunny Side Up and Skinny Latte look quite similar. As well as French Toast and Extra Slice. They look similar to me. Maple Syrup and Pancake Please looks very similar. So there's a lot of similarities in my personal opinion. But I do feel like that they are different enough to be an eyeshadow palette. Now again, people always hate on Zoella because apparently she just seems to be the person to hate on. But I do think that it is all different colours, whereas some brands have had just the same colour on constant repeat. So, it is up to you. Let me know in the comment section below what you personally think. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is this quote-unquote challenge that's been going around not long for a little bit on YouTube. It has been going around for about a year, uh, not on YouTube, sorry, in social media. That has been going around for about two years now. It first started in 2017 on the app called WhatsApp. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about the Momo Challenge. Now again, this started back in 2017. It started on WhatsApp. It was, wasn't was even photos, nothing. It was just someone kind of texting creepy things. Now, if you don't know who Momo is, Momo is a character based on a Japanese fright sculpture created by an animation company. It's supposed to look, it, it, it does have a scary vibe. People say it's like a bird person. I don't know, but that is the description I found. So Momo has given, so this Japanese fright character has given rise to the Momo challenge, which first made internet say shape. international news in the middle of last year, which is interesting because it's been around since 2017, but it's been speculated. It's been brought up a lot more. It involves a cyber predators in the disguise of Momo contacting children through applications such as WhatsApp which is where it originally started and other social media platforms um, where all of the drama has been happening it has been on YouTube and Momo has been instructing them to self-harm or suicide again this is horrible please don't listen to this no matter what age you are it did start off with teenagers but they realize that teenagers don't listen to that type of bullshit and have targeted children. If you are a parent or if you're a young child listening to this and you see a creepy face as shown on your screen right now and it is telling you something, do not listen to it because it is telling you horrible things that you should not be doing. No one should be self-harming or suiciding or listening to anyone giving instructions from a creepy character. Now, Again, this has been around since 2017. Why has there been all of a sudden news about this in 2019? You know, two years later. Well, that is a good question. In 2017, two people died, yet we're talking about it now in 2019. Again, I think it's because it's on YouTube and the news articles and news in general like to really look at YouTube with a giant microscope and be like, hey, this one thing is horrible. Let's not do it. And I'm going to throw a little spanner in the works here. Fun fact, the Momo Challenge is actually fake. I know, I read you all this and you're telling me now that it's fake. No way is that I can see of is an actual photo or instructions of videos telling children to kill themselves. And again, this is only what I could find. So if there is, then there, there you go. But nowhere recently has there been a video that does that. So again, ch children, to start off with, if you're under the ages of, I'm going to say thir 13 and under, first off, you shouldn't be on YouTube. You should be on YouTube Kids, as that is what it is designed for. Secondly, if you're a parent with a young child, you should be seeing what they're watching because YouTube cannot control everything. It is not their fault that you were giving the tablet or phone or whatever device it is to your child as a quote-unquote babysitter. YouTube has a lot on its plate right now, like trying to fix its shit because 
most of the time that can barely work so there we go all I'm gonna say is if you're under the age of 13 go on the YouTube kids app if you're a parent or someone who looks after children or kids maybe watch the videos beforehand have like a playlist of safe videos and let your kids watch those that's all I'm gonna say for that and now we have some breaking news sound like a real uh, what's it called a real news channel over here Ariana Grande's Starbucks drink isn't vegan and people are seriously confused so if you don't know Miss Ariana Grande announced she was clubbing with Starbucks cool with a new drink called Cloud Macchiato now this drink is basically an espresso shot and milk with fluffy foam on top it comes in caramel or cinnamon flavor and apparently it's really good according to a lot of people on Instagram Again, I'm reading all of this stuff off of BuzzFeed, just so you know, so take everything with a pinch of salt. But upon expecting the ingredients list, people are not happy with what they found. Again, Ariana Grande has said that she is vegan, but in the ingredients it says milk, egg white powders, butter, which has cream milk, heavy cream, and non-fat dry milk. It's not very vegan. And Ariana Grande herself has tweeted... Herself has professionally been vegan since 2013 when she tweeted she's always kept meat minimal but has officially decided to go 100% vegan. So everyone of course is very mad but Ariana Grande did tweet at Starbucks Cloud, hashtag Cloud Macchiata, hashtag Starbucks Ambassador, hashtag try the soy version. And of course a lot of people are mad because they're saying I thought Starbucks knew since it's been endorsed by Ariana Grande you know people would assume it's vegan. Because, you know, she is vegan, but the drink is not vegan. Even some staff members are getting angry because they're saying, please stop asking us for the vegan drink because it is not vegan. Because, you know, they assume Ariana Grande is vegan, that she would promote a vegan drink. But some people point out that it is unclear whether Ariana Grande even considers herself vegan anymore since she hasn't spoken about it publicly. So... Marley or at hold my Ariana Ariana says why are people so obsessed with Ariana being vegan or not people wouldn't calm down Chanel number one at Cafe de Chanel tweeted why are people getting mad at Ariana for having her name behind a non-vegan start box drink she hasn't said she's vegan in years and she might not even be anymore lol also who cares she can't control the world and my personal opinion of this is I understand why people are mad because, you know, if someone is vegan, you assume that they do the same thing. But also, a lot of celebrities and influencers and all that endorse things that doesn't 100% fit them. It's as simple as that. Also, Ariana didn't say in an interview with Mira, she did say, I love animals more than I love most people. Not kidding. But I'm a firm believer in eating a plant, a full plant-based whole food diet that can expand your life Lens and make you an all-round happier person. In my personal opinion, that does not say I'm vegan, I'm not going to drink any milk or have no eggs ever in my life. To me, that just says, I'm going to try and stick to not having any meat. Again, let me know in the comment section below, but I really think it doesn't really matter what celebrities endorse if it is not what they stereotypically think the celebrity is. For example, if you're a fitness guru and you're promoting, let's say, Hungry Jacks or, as some of you know it as Burger King, obviously they're going to get mad. So again, no matter what, you're not going to win. That is all for our breaking news segment. And for the last little bit, we got to talk about T-Series versus PewDiePie. So I'm just going to quickly pull up the counter for T-Series versus PewDiePie as of recording this. And if you don't know, you should have it on your Twitter there is a sub count bot that tells you the percentage, well not percentage, but how much is left in between them and it is getting real close. There was negative 800, there has been a lot. So looking at it right now, the PewDiePie and T-Series sub gap is 10,000 and roughly around 152. So T-Series is at 88 million and PewDiePie is at 89 million. It's still anybody's game as per normal. But let's see if we can get that sweet old PewDiePie to maybe 100 mil. Now you're probably thinking, 
Why on earth should we support PewDiePie? Hasn't he done a lot of bad things in the past? Should we really be supporting him? And why shouldn't we support T-Series? Again, I have nothing wrong with anyone who supports T-Series. I personally have not watched their YouTube channel or anything like that. So, again, I have nothing against anyone who is a T-Series fan, follower, or makes T-Series. I have no shade, no tea, nothing against you. All I'm saying is, if you're a YouTube creator like myself, and even if you're someone who really supports YouTube as a platform, PewDiePie is a person to support in this because he has been there. He's been doing this for a long time now. He's his own person. Yeah, he has some people here and there helping him, but he's not a giant company. And he's done exceptionally well for being, you know, let's say three of them. Because there's Brad 1, Brad 2 and him. But overall, he's done exceptionally well to get where he is. And people obviously have to love him to get to where he is. T-Series has come out out of the blue and gone from nothing to, you know, 88 million in the span of a couple of months. They're a channel that puts up five videos a day and they are a huge company. Like, they are a giant company. So, in my personal opinion, you support whoever, but if you want to keep PewDiePie up there, Go sub to him right now. Another reason why people want PewDiePie to be at the top is to show that people who are influential people like PewDiePie, who is just themselves, still own the platform. Because once a company takes over, it's going to be very rare that we're going to be able to get that back. Because companies usually win. They usually, you know, and they're starting to take over everything. They've taken over TVs. And now they're taking over YouTube and we would want to prevail that because, you know, YouTube is supposed to be a platform where creators, big and small, are supposed to talk about their opinions. They can just chat about everything and anything. And now that, you know, all of these big companies are coming and kind of taking over, it feels a bit meh. And not only that, it's just hard because... You really want to see that you know, it's an individual can do something great and you don't need a team of people behind you. But again, support who you support. If you support T-Series, good on you. If you support PewDiePie, good on you. If you don't know who I'm talking about, then I question your life decisions. <laughs> nah, I respect you no matter who you support. So again, we're just going to check the live counter real quick. It's still sitting around the 10,000 gap. So hopefully it stays like that for a long, long time. And that is the end of today's podcast. If you liked it, let me know in the comment section below. This is my first time ever doing a podcast type of format. So we're going to see how this goes. But anyway, thank you all so much for listening. And I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, <laughs> jar it out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Or I'll listen to you guys in the next podcast. Everyone stay chill and stay cool. And I'll talk to you guys when there's more tea to be served. Goodbye, everyone.